Nick Kyrgios took on Novak Djokovic in last weekend's Wimbledon final, just missing out on what would have been his first major title. Kyrgios is a dividing figure within tennis. Some say he is like Marmite. You either love him or you hate him. But after his recent Wimbledon run, he has gained a lot more fans across the tennis world. Today, we are discussing why people love Nick Kyrgios, so don't go anywhere. First up, it's his recent form. It's safe to say that Kyrgios has somewhat flattered to deceive in his career so far. Before last weekend's Wimbledon final appearance, the 27-year-old had only gotten as far as the quarterfinals in any major tournament, which came in his home tournament of the Australian Open back in 2015. Kyrgios clearly has the talent, but unfortunately for him, he has come up in the same era of three of the best players to ever do it, Rafa Nadal, Roger Federer, and Novak Djokovic. Federer was nowhere to be seen at this year's Wimbledon, having been out for a year following a knee injury sustained at last year's tournament. So, this was seen as a huge opportunity for Nick, which he appeared to have grabbed with both hands after defeating the likes of Brit Paul Jubb in the first round and Brandon Nakashima and Christian Guerin in the latter rounds. And his hopes would have been increased substantially after Rafa pulled out of the semi. But unfortunately for Nick and his adoring Aussie fan base, he just came up short. I mean, Djokovic is one of the greatest ever players, so Kyrgios can hold his head high. He provided plenty of high points during his Wimbledon run this year, highs that won't be forgotten for a long time, and long may this form continue. Hopefully he can keep it up going into the US Open this autumn and finally break the major hoodoo. Do you guys think he can? Next up, we're discussing his many Maverick performances over the years. Stay tuned. When Hurricane Kyrgios first rolled around, he was a breath of fresh air. From the very start of his career, he was a polarizing figure, with many people saying he should respect the traditions of the game and fine-tune his behavior somewhat. Since making his debut, he has racked up thousands of pound worth of fines, but they seem to have done nothing to deter his maverick ways. The first big flashpoint came in June 2015 when making just his second ever appearance at SW19. He would play four matches at the tournament, but each one came with something of a flashpoint, from his first round match with Diego Schwartzman, in which he appeared to call his opponent dirty scum, to his second round match against Juan Monaco, when he questioned the umpire asking, does it feel good to be up there in that chair? Does it feel strong to be up in the chair? In the next round, Kyrgios decided to go ahead and smash his racket in frustration before getting involved in a verbal spat with a female fan. He was then accused of purposely flunking his fourth round match against Richard Gasquet, being booed off when fans figured out that he wasn't playing to his full potential, which wouldn't be the first time he would be accused of this throughout his career. It is this sort of bad boy behavior which has had fans claiming was just what tennis needed. What do you guys make of his antics? So what else has he done throughout his career? Well, where do we start really? You probably remember a confrontation he had with Stan Wawrinka shortly after that infamous Wimbledon of 2000. 2015. Some senior figures on the tour might have encouraged him to rein in his aggressive nature, but if they did, it fell on deaf ears. Just ask Warinka. During a tournament in Montreal, the Aussie was caught insulting the Swiss star, first telling him, Kokonakis banged your girlfriend, sorry to tell you that, mate, in reference to his fellow Aussie, Tanasi Kokonakis. Then he goaded Warinka further by claiming under his breath that his opponent was banging 18-year-olds, clearly knowing that it would get back to Warinka later. He was slapped with a four-week ban as well as a $25,000 fine, which he would become very accustomed to paying over the next few years. 2016 brought with it plenty more controversies, from aggressively shouting at a ball boy in French to again being accused of not trying, this time being fined more than $30,000 for his obvious antics. He was recorded asking the umpire if he could call time so I can finish this match and go home, which is pretty hilarious to be fair. I mean, if he doesn't want to be there, then you shouldn't really force him to be. It is this sort of don't give a damn attitude that has seen Kyrgios's initial haters soften in their approach to him. I mean, he actually is a breath of fresh air, right? What other stuff has he done then? Stay tuned to find out. Well, who can forget his 2017 altercation with Dudi Sela after swearing at the Israelis' fans? Kyrgios mocked fans at the end of the match, which led to Sela confronting him and the pair looking like they were actually going to get into it for a second before being separated. In 2018, he was caught making crude gestures with a water bottle and fined 15,000 euros for the gesture. It came during a match with Marine Cilic, when during the end change, Nick sprayed some water suggestively before smirking at someone in the crowd. After after the incident, he said, let's get that water bottle thing clear. It was bad and I shouldn't have done it with kids watching, so make sure you put it in the article. Kyrgios went on to suggest he was being targeted, saying, my girlfriend, Isla Tomlianovich, will kill me if I don't apologize, and it was unacceptable. But Denis Shapovalov gets fined 5k for hitting an umpire in the eye and sending him to the hospital. I get fined 15k for playing with a water bottle. Of course, we cannot condone this sort of behavior, and sometimes Kyrgios does go too far, but we would rather have him around than not. What do you guys think? Should he tone it down or carry on as only Nick Kyrgios can, and who can forget that chair incident? Back in May 2019, Kyrgios again hit the headlines for some ungentlemanly behavior. He went absolutely mental after being handed a game penalty after, yet again, swearing at a fan, would you believe?
lead. Before throwing his racket to the floor in one of the best temper tantrums we've seen in ages, he kicked a water bottle, which had done absolutely nothing to him by the way. However, the piece de resistance of the whole affair was when he picked up a chair and threw it onto the court before picking up his bag and storming off into the locker room. Quite unsurprisingly, this resulted in him politely being asked to leave the Italian Open by way of disqualification. He later admitted he might have gone a little overboard and was fined 20,000 euros for his outburst for what constituted unsportsmanlike behavior. He was also stripped of the 45 ranking points he had acquired throughout the tournament, whilst also being told he had to pay his own hospitality costs. Wow. I mean, the entertainment value of Kyrgios alone is worth the entrance fee of any tournament he takes part in, and it is this factor that has gained him so many fans over the years. Sure, he will have lost a few due to his antics, but people love a sportsman who wears his heart on his sleeve and shows a bit of passion. Do you remember the chair-throwing incident? And finally, he was up to his old antics again this weekend. This past weekend saw Kyrgios fall short in his bid for a first major, just losing out to Novak Djokovic. And during the match, Nick accused a female heckler of having 700 drinks, and she has now responded. I mean, why you would get into it with Kyrgios we will never know, but she obviously felt brave enough. The Aussie was visibly upset at her speaking out to him, saying to the umpire, why is she still here? She's drunk out of her mind and speaking to me in the middle of a game. The umpire asked who he meant, and he replied, the one who looks like she's had about 700 drinks. However, the woman in question, a Polish lawyer by the name of Ania Palace, has now given her side of the story. Having been escorted from the arena for a talking to by stewards, she returned with a bottle of water shortly afterwards, and she spoke out this week, saying, he always says the crowd is against him, and I wanted to show we were for him. I wanted to encourage him. I only had one Pims and one Rosé. It's the temperature for me. I had no hat. I'm really sorry. Wow. As always, thanks for tuning in today, and remember to stop by again next time when we will be discussing all sorts of other fun bits and pieces. And why not do us a solid by liking and sharing today's video with any tennis slash curios fans you know of. Bye, guys.